Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today we're going to be going over some of the basics that you guys have been asking for with regards to how do I even get started with micro soldering. So let's get into the video. Now I've heard a lot of texts say that when it comes to micro soldering, it seems to be intimidating. And I completely understand because I remember my first time even trying to do a repair. In fact, the first time I ever did any type of micro soldering, I was using a burning tool, a, a wood burning tool on a Samsung, it was a Samsung S3 charge port repair. At the time, there was no real information on how to do it. I had some really cheap solder, no microscope, but I was still able to successfully do tons and tons of that particular repair. So it really doesn't require perfect equipment or knowledge about how to start doing it. However, when you start to get into it, you realize that having the right equipment, the right techniques, and the right products really makes a big difference. So let me quickly go over a short list of the things that you need to start micro soldering. Of course, you're gonna want a soldering iron. Now, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be really, it doesn't have to be one of the really expensive soldering irons. However, the really important part is going to be the tip. The tip of the soldering iron really makes a difference when it comes to the jobs that you're gonna be performing. If the tip is too small, it may not conduct enough heat to transfer into whatever you're soldering. If it's too large, it might not fit where you're trying to work the soldering iron. So it will limit the type of jobs that you can do. If you're doing something as simple as a charge port on an iPad, for example, the majority of those are flex cables that are soldered to the motherboard. And although it's always possible to replace just the port on the flex, and it'll save you a little money if you do that, that doesn't require a soldering iron, but the whole flex unit, which is easier, does. So here, for example, this is the soldering iron that I've been using recently. This is the GVM 3-in-1 soldering station. It comes with several different soldering tips and handles. So this is one of the smaller ones with a smaller tip, and I can basically do almost every single job with this because the tip is versatile, it has a point, it has flat, it's large, it has, it's got a chisel, it's a chisel blade, which means I can cover a lot of area. I can tilt it at a specific angle and cover more surface area, or I can turn it around and just tip, touch the tip to something. So I'm able to use it the, basically with any type of repair. The next thing that you're going to need is some type of solder. I've got, for example, here, this is just a regular uh, 6337 flux core. This is a 2% flux core soldering wire. I love working with a 6337 mix. What this basically is, is like a, a lower melting solder. It really helps when it comes to the way that it flows. And the other thing that you're going to want is some type of flux. Now there's a lot of fluxes out there and the majority do the trick. Basically what flux is, is a cleaning agent. It prevents oxidation from, from occurring and the side effect of that is it allows the solder to naturally flow where it wants to. So if you're trying to connect a leg of a, of a chip to a pad on a motherboard, flux will help protect the metallic surfaces that are going to receive the solder by coating them in a layer that will prevent them from oxidizing as the soldering iron hits it, creating a nice surface for the solder to flow and connect the two joints. A lot of the fluxes say that they are no clean flux, which means you probably won't have any long-term negative effects of leaving them. However, there are some flux that over time can erode the solder itself and so cleaning up all of the flux when possible is something that you want to do. And you can do that with something as simple as isopropyl, also, isopropyl alcohol. You could also use some PCB cleaners. There are plenty of them out there. So that's something to look into. The next thing that you're going to want is some type of wick. I really like Goot Wick. There are some other wicks out there that are really, really good. If you have 
any particular solder, flux, or wick that you like to use, leave it in the comments below. And with that, an iron, flux, solder, wick, you can perform almost every single solder job out there. Sometimes it requires having a good pair of tweezers, and depending on the type of soldering that you're doing, you may need to have a rework station. A hotter rework station can allow you to expand the type of jobs that you do from just simply being able to replace something like a flex cable for the charge port on an iPad to replacing IC chips, where you can't do that with a soldering iron. Now the soldering iron is needed during the repair because then you're able to wick the BGA grid under the chip after you remove it so that you can apply a new chip. You'll need the soldering iron for that, but removing the chip and, re and placing the chip back will require a rework station. But that's getting a little bit too advanced and this video is more for the beginners. So a couple things that I wanna focus on would be the techniques that are used. One thing you should definitely look into if this is something you're going to be doing is getting different types of solder. There is a solder called a 138. It's a low melt solder. There are solder that are even lower melting than that. Low melt solder really helps lower the temperature that the component needs to get to to remove it. And so for example, working with a flex cable on the back of an iPad motherboard, using some low melt to mix with the factory solder will really help in lifting that flex off without pulling pads. If the jobs are improperly done, the pads can, you can put strain on the pads when you're trying to lift the flex away and you can tear them off the motherboard. And although that's almost always fixable, it requires a lot of work as you've probably seen in some previous videos. If you haven't, I recommend you checking those out. And one of the really important things is understanding how to maintain your soldering iron tip. The tips over time will oxidize and wear away and become useless if you don't properly store them. That means protecting the tip with a small amount of solder before you stow it away and making sure that you either turn off the soldering iron or that it has a natural sleep function so that when you store it away, it can cool down and not continue to oxidize and ruin your tip. And something that you'll want to have is some way to clean the tip. This right here is a basically a, a metallic sponge that'll help strip the soldering iron of any of the oxidation and solder that is on it so that you can apply new solder to it when soldering. If you have an oxidized tip, it won't transfer the heat, it won't solder properly, and it'll make your job really, really hard. So having something to clean the tip is definitely necessary. And there are flux and there are tip cleaners that'll help you bring an oxidized tip back to life, rejuvenating it if it does happen. If you've let your if you've let the soldering iron tip oxidize too much to be useful. Beyond that, it's simply working with the temperature, understanding the temperature that your soldering iron needs to be at. Now, a good temperature range to start at is around 350 degrees Celsius. This temperature works for both. This temperature works for almost every single solder job. Now, depending on the thermal mass of the logic board that you're working on, some are thicker and much larger, hence they pull the heat away from the soldering tip quicker. You'll either have to upgrade tip size of the soldering iron, or you'll have to up the temperature of the soldering iron tip. Upping the temperature oxidizes things quicker, making things harder to solder, even though the solder flows much easier. And having a too low of temperature will prevent the solder from melting properly, and it'll make your life really hard because you won't be able to solder. You'll get globs of solder that aren't penetrating through the through holes or through the flex down to the motherboard and making contact. It all depends on the job that you're doing, but you really have to know temperature control. And this comes with experience, trying a repair and working your way through it. If you haven't, if you're looking to get into soldering, what I recommend is getting a device that you can damage, get a motherboard that's already damaged, water damaged, whatever, and start experimenting with it. Get, pick yourself, pick up a cheap soldering station, get some flux, get some wire, get some wick, and watch YouTube videos because they are very instructional as to, 
as you can find very instructional videos on how to use the tools and equipment. I've obviously put out several. In fact, Wednesdays are the typical days where I put out soldering videos. Now, I do obviously have other videos that include soldering on typically Thursdays and Fridays. But if you go back and watch the last 20 plus weeks of Wednesday videos, you will have a good grasp on how to start soldering. The really cool thing about starting to get into this type of repair is it really opens the door for the types of repairs that you can do. All of a sudden, you'll be able to start looking at doing face ID repairs. You'll be able to do camera repairs. You'll be able to start doing motherboard. You'll be able to start troubleshooting and diagnosing shorts on motherboards. Replacing ICs, like charging ICs, PMICs. You'll be able to start looking into doing data recovery with transferring over the CPU, NAND, EEPROM, things like that in order to salvage somebody's photos. It really starts to open the doors to so much potential that you have to, to expand the type of repairs that you have for your clients. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. If there's something that you think I missed going over a basics soldering skills, put it in the comments below as well. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.